Hey guys, um, so this video, I'm gonna try to break down the patterns and and how the Mazak actually reads the program so you have a better, better understanding when you're writing a program what, what it actually uh, consists of. Uh, this is uh, uh, comments that I received uh, from Wheels Are Cool, so shout out to you. I think that's a very, very good idea. Um, and I'm gonna try to kind of break it down um, to, you know, for you to understand where you uh, creating units and and tool sequence data, so like what these things actually do. Because like I said, it's it's pretty simple. And and when you write program, what the, what the Mazak is looking for and why it's actually doing it. So I'm gonna try to keep it like as simple and as compact as possible. Uh, I know I need to work on this. So uh, without further ado, let's kind of get to it. So I'm gonna shift the camera to my blackboard, okay? And over here, so you're gonna see Mazak program equals three sets of data referred to as units um, or common units. So we're gonna have three things, uh, A, B, and C, right? So you have unit data, uh, then you have your tool sequence data and shape sequence data. Okay, so I know that kind of sounds like, you know, um, I don't know, complicated or not. It depends like how much you know, uh, what do you call it, about programming. But obviously, if, uh, if you're pretty good, then you're not going to watch this video. Like I said, this is mo mostly for somebody that's starting and, you know, just to kind of get you going. So unit, so we have uh, different type of units. I can tell you when you write a program, right, you have a, you open your page and you're writing program you can have many A's, okay, many unit da data, but uh, by itself, but you cannot have B, tool sequence data or shape sequence data by itself. And I'm gonna explain this in a second because there's a lot of common unit data. And what unit data does is you're telling a machine something that's gonna apply for, you know, through the, throughout the whole program or for example, or you're giving a machine a command. And, you know, when you think about, well, what's the unit data, right? So originally, you know, what I call header. So let's say we have, we make a unit data that's gonna, you know, have the material type, right? So material type, then it's gonna have data that, you know, what's the max uh, size of your material, right? So we're gonna have six inch what's the minimum id right so it's gonna go zero then you know uh maximum length uh, let's call it you know six um uh, what's the face uh, uh how much uh, well what is the face you're working with so let's say you have two hundred thousand stock or you you want the machine to start uh you know 200 before the face so you have a little bit clearance and stuff like that so we can call it 0.2 right and then your maximum rpm so let's call it 1200 this is a okay this is unit data that's like a common unit data so every time you're gonna make a program let's say facing program turning milling whatever it is the machine's gonna look it, look into that first because you know if you have material type it automatically can uh, assign you know parameters right when you're writing a program that's from where you can uh mess with the cutting conditions as a C conditions, right? Then if it's gonna do six inches, so the machine's gonna know when it's approaching or it's going home that she needs to go six inches or higher, for example, for clearance, because that's what you're telling her. Even if your part is two inches, the safety and, and, and all these things are gonna be based on what you said over here. Same thing for the length, same thing for the face, right? If you have 200,000 on the face, it's gonna come down, it's gonna stop 200,000 before the face, before it's gonna approach. And then the maximum RPM, 
no matter what you're gonna put in, in a figure or program or actually technically in a tool sequence data, which we're gonna get to, this is the maximum she will go. You put a restriction. And as you guys know, I'm a great fan of uh, doing the material type data and I'm gonna put the end uh, tool data. Let me see if I can lower it a little bit. So end tool, uh, end tool data, right? This is technically, so uh, you have a facing program. First it's gonna look at that, then it's gonna run this. Once they run this, it's gonna go, okay, we're ending, right? Um, are we uh, repeating? Uh, do we have a calculations? If we repeating, let's say, if you say no, then you know you continue. But if you say yes, then it's gonna uh, open up more options. It's like, how many times do you wanna repeat? Are you shifting? How much you're shifting and all these things. It's like, do you wanna jump in, into another program, right? This is that box you have. This is in your all unit. Your end unit is an also A by itself, right? And there's no more what type of tools or there's no figure or nothing. Um, so let's say we have a face, we have OD turning and we have drilling. If you're gonna run a face just by itself, it's gonna read this and this. If you don't have this, if you don't have that end unit, it's not gonna allow you to face. If you're gonna run outside, uh, let's say, you know, bar out, if you don't have the end unit, you're not going anywhere. Drilling, if you're gonna run these in auto, like I said, this is the first thing. That's why I always use these first, or I'll do my material, whatever I'm doing, and then it go at the end, because if you go try to like do trace or tool path, it will alarm out because it doesn't know what you wanna do after that. So these two common units technically will uh, guide anything that's gonna be in between. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this. Let me see. This is a movable, movable blackboard. I'm gonna raise the camera a little bit. Okay. When it comes to uh, different uh, unit data, right? So because there's uh, what do you call it? There's there's a bunch of them. So um, for example, you know, like we said, the material that's gonna be your common data. Uh, your end unit that's gonna be common data. You also have a sub program. Uh, unit right so you know you pick a unit and it's gonna show you what you want to do you can add sub program then you can do uh, uh, head selection for example you can do head selection one or two right you can do um, what else um, there's uh, let me see for example transfer you know that's that's also you just do a transfer you're telling the machine to do a certain uh, let's say task, you know, we're transferring head, but it doesn't have any uh, tools or it doesn't have any shape sequences. So common tool data, it's got a, like I said, it's just, you're, you're telling machine to do a certain thing, but it has nothing to do with actually cutting the material. Now, um, let's gonna say, let's say that um, we're gonna have um, also common data, like, uh, so common unit, I'm sorry, also applies to um, to the machining process, right? So your milling, for example, you know, that's gonna be your unit, right? Uh, and, and that's gonna be, um, you know, from point machining, point. Then, you know, uh, the second one, that's gonna be your line. And third one is gonna be face machining, face, right? These are three on milling. And I'm not gonna get into these, uh, because I'm gonna try to keep this as short as possible. I made a video over an hour. Oh my god uh, That's that's you know, that's gonna be a long time and then then we have our uh, turning right so late and You know, we're gonna have our bar Out or in and then we're gonna have your copy right copies and then you have your facing facing and you have your threading grooving, drilling, drill, and tapping from what I remember. Okay, so that's all, also unit, but when you pick either those point line face, or you pick any of these, this is where we're gonna go into the A, B, and C. And let's do this. So for example, we're gonna create a common unit 
unit, which is going to be facing, right? The only question on this, so we're telling the machine that we want to face. So we're telling the machine we, all, we are only going up and down. And that's what facing does. When you do threading, we're telling the machine we're going to be running something in very, uh, very fast, you know, uh, very fast feed. So the feed's going to follow the pitch of the thread. When you're drilling, right, we're telling the machine we're only going to come in. So pretty much come in and out. And then we figured out the patterns and everything, how fast, you know, and stuff like that. So all these, like I said, are you telling the machine that we are going to perform a certain task and that task has a, spe a specific behavior. So we have a facing. On this one, from what I remember, I don't have the, obviously I'm not in the shop. You do, the only question you answer is how much are you want to leave stock for the face, right? So you're finished. We're going to leave finish 3000. So this is going to be our unit number. So now it's going to, once you've done this, it's going to populate something and it's going to say, uh, um, that's going to be uh, S and O, which is a tool sequence number. So now it's asking you, which tool, which tool do you want to use, right? So I uh, want to use my 80F and that's going to be a rougher and finish, right? So same thing. So I'm just going to, instead of rougher finish, I'm just going to write it in one line. Well, it's going to ask, okay, so you have this tool. So um, how deep of the cut that tool is going to make, right? So let's say, uh, let's make 20,000 cuts. So 20,000 per pass. Well, if you got 20,000 per pass, well, how fast do you want to go and do that, right? So well, I want to do it 300, you know, surface speed. Well, how fast do you want to go, right? So let's say, you know, I want to go 10,000 feet rate. Then you have that your boxes where you put your M8 for cooling on or M9 for cooling off, your optional stop or just the stop, right? And then your barrier cancel or barrier on and stuff like that if you uh, if you're using your jaws if you program your jaws in a setup and everything so technically we just answered all the tools and the speeds and feeds that these tools will provide like the uh, the parameters right that we want to cut also once we're done with your uh, 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 sequence uh, for your tooling well now it's gonna jump to the figure right fig well so what do we want to know? We're telling the machine, what's your starting point on X? Starting point on X, right? Well, it's going to be five inches. Well, what about starting point on Z? Well, let's make it a 100. We are starting 100 from the Z that we set. Well, how, how low do you want to go, right? Because it facing it goes from, you know, from the top to the center. Well, I want this to come all the way to the center to fully clean the, you know, the part. So my final on X is going to be zero. My final on Z, it's also going to be zero. So we want facing with this tool, that depth of cut, this speed, this feed rate with the coolant on to start five inches, right? So we drew draw a figure and we told the machine, I have a five inch part with 100,000 stock of the depth. I want it to go 20,000 per passes each and leave me 3,000 on the last pass for finish. And that last pass for finish, right? I'm, go I'm going to do, you know, a little bit faster on a surface, on a speed, but a little bit slower when it comes down on cutting. So I have that nicer finish. So we have, like I said, A, B, and C, and it's same thing. I'll do, uh, I'll do one more. Uh, what do you call it? So um, so let's pick uh, unit number. Unit number. So let's make it a drill, right? So you know, so we're gonna do drilling, um, and then it's gonna ask, you know. Um, for our tooling, right? So we got a one inch drill. Um, it's gonna ask, we know which pattern do you wanna use? Do you wanna do number zero? Do you wanna use number one, two, three, right? You know, I like it, to, I like using pattern number one. Well, number one, it gives me, you know, uh, you can do auto set, right? And it gives me three different cuts. So automatically, 
let's say if it's a one inch drill it applies for example one inch and then let's call it 200 and 200 but i can change that at any time this is just uh this is just recommended cut for let's say high speed drills right and the same thing so we have one inch drill we want to do pattern one this is going to be our depth of cuts you know our surface speed same thing right 300 uh, 3000 feed rate 0 0.003 and then my m8 and now we do a figure well what what drill do right so it drills a hole there's no hole yet but technically you're telling i want to drill one inch from starting point z to finish point z because it only moves on one axis right so you're gonna starting point is gonna be zero and finish point let's say we're going five inches so if i do one if i do a depth of cut so let's say packing one inch 0 0.2 0 0.2 right it's gonna go one inch retract go 200 deeper to 1.2 retract go 200 deep retract at you know that's gonna be at 1.4 and then it's gonna go one inch again and retract or whatever or if i got an insert drill i got a cooling drill if i'm going to five inches i'm just gonna put over here go five inches so it's not gonna pack it's gonna go five inches it's gonna hit that bottom it's gonna come out and it's gonna go home same thing we're telling the machine that we're drilling so it's gonna do go straight the type of tool and how fast we go in and the figure same thing as like i said i mean so like if, if you follow these you could see how very very easy these things is right thread right so it's like well technically same thing as you know you do thread and then you so now you now you have to answer you know questions it's like if you're gonna do thread the size of the thread and and uh and you know your pitches and then your speeds your height that's you know automatically populated and all these things and same thing is like if it's outside uh, same thing is like is it in or out right so the, so the machine's got to know if it's going to be threading outside or inside and same thing is like then you get a which tool you're going to use how fast you want to go and stuff like that and then your starting point you know on x starting point on z right so you know um then your final point x and final point z so we want to go starting point of two inches from zero we're going to two inches and on a z let's call it three inches so you're telling the machine that you know starting point x that this is two inches right we want to start from a zero we want to finish on the same od two inches and let's go three inches deep right so from here to here it's going to be three inches so the machine's going to go if it's number eight thread it's going to calculate 125,000 pitch which is you know so it's going to create eight of these suckers per inch right and you know and this is going to be your 80,000 80, depth let's say for so it's like i said it's super simple um i love that mazak created this way because on siemens control or if you're gonna program hercos what what sucks about it is you know you create you create these units let's say uh you know you create uh for example you want to do od turning or you want to do whatever it's like you go one page so you go line then you have to go jump into another page you know now maybe you want to do uh you know maybe you want to do taper then you go into another page right so if like i do a lot of these like uh taper taper here here tapered it's like it's a bunch of them right so when you think about it it's like uh i can create a bunch of units and if these are pretty uh let's say half an inch or like 300,000, then you create a pattern and all you do is you start adding 300 300 300 300 300 right and you can make a bunch of them like really really quick so when it comes to program engineering on amazac like i said you know uh, kudos to them it's really good like i said it's fairly easy to understand um so just understand that your common units data are can be standalone but your uh the actually data for uh which is also common data for writing a program for actually creating a shape it will have a common data as your threads drill facing copying then you pick your tool data so you know drills od turning grooving bars you know uh or grooving shanks and what, what all these things and you're going to apply the depth of cuts and speeds and you do then you do finally your shapes and you know depends on your job some shapes get cut if, well they get complicated and you, you know sometimes it's like it takes a lot of uh, like 80 90 even lines to create a shape 
but that's the thing is it's like the, because you have everything on a single page it, it makes it so much so much easier for low volume prototype parts something quick and i know a lot of you guys you know you like your g codes and but look the the fact is if you're gonna write your g code on a machine or you're gonna go to your master cam or cam program by the time you come back i'm gonna have this program done you cannot and, and like I said, and I have a guy that programs the 250 MSY, and uh, so he runs pretty much everything in uh, e, EIA program and what do you call it? And you, you cannot compare, uh, so you know you you, not, you can't really comp, uh, compete with uh, with the Mazatrol. The only time where Mazatrol I would say be lag is uh, if you do 3D shapes, if you do 3D milling. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that option. And there are certain t uh, things when it comes to the control that that I think there might be a little bit shortcoming here, but for like 99% of the jobs that I'm doing, like I said, I was never unable to actually machine the part yet. So sprockets, you know, inside, outside, you know, grooving, shape, like whatever. It's like I said, it, it flies and then you know you want to make an adjustment you make adjustment in your figure uh, if you don't want to do any adjustments for example like if you make an adjustment on the radius tape you don't have to go you know look for your program you got to correct it you don't like the radius of your insert right you want to use because let's say chatter so you want to use something sharper because that's gonna you know that often helps with the chatter you just replace the tool you change the radius when the machine runs the figure, it takes the radiuses of the insert and automatically compensates for those radiuses. Same thing as for milling. Like I said, you know, usually when you run the cam program, I know there's some parameters that will read uh, certain parameters from the tooling, but with the Mesa, you don't have to worry about it. So like I said, it's just a one-stop shop, it's fast. If you have a shop and you don't have a Mesa, I think uh, you should get yourself checked. And that's, uh, that's my, uh, personal not important uh opinion but like i said i mean i love them and i i love doing this thing and like i said and i like i said appreciate it two wheels are uh cool again for giving me a, a great uh idea for this video so shit, we did it we came to the end uh, okay guys so thank you for watching and uh and see you next video